SpaceX engineers are panicking. A NASA scientist just revealed a Mars rocket that makes Starship look like a joke. Dr. Zubrin's mini Starship needs only 120 tons of fuel. That's five times less than Musk's 600-ton monster. Here's what terrifies Elon. This tiny rocket could reach Mars first and cheaper. Is this the end of Starship? Let's dive right in. Three months ago, behind closed doors at NASA headquarters, something unprecedented happened. Dr. Robert Zubrin walked into a room full of SpaceX's biggest supporters and dropped a bombshell that left everyone speechless. The presentation lasted exactly 47 minutes. By the end, half the room was questioning everything they knew about Mars exploration. What did Zubrin show them? A single slide with two numbers, 120 versus 600. Those weren't just statistics. They were the beginning of space's worst nightmare. Here's what's keeping Musk up at night. While SpaceX burns through $3 billion developing Starship, Zubrin created something that makes their giant rocket look like an expensive mistake. His mini Starship needs only 120 tons of fuel to leave Mars. Starship? A whopping 600 tons. But that's just the beginning. The real killer is what this means for mission timelines. SpaceX estimates 8 to 10 refueling flights just to get one Starship to Mars. That's potentially $800 million per mission before you even leave Earth orbit. Zubrin's approach? One launch straight to Mars. The cost difference is devastating. And here's the twist nobody saw coming. While SpaceX struggles with heat shield failures after seven test flights, Zubrin's system sidesteps the problem entirely. Remember when Starship was supposed to be revolutionary? Fast forward to today, and SpaceX has spent four years trying to solve a single problem, keeping those heat shield tiles attached. Flight after flight, they're still falling off and burning up. But Zubrin discovered something SpaceX missed. The problem isn't the tiles, it's the size. Starship is simply too massive to handle re-entry efficiently. Every tile failure cascades into bigger problems. More weight, more complexity, more failure points. Meanwhile, Zubrin's mini Starship, at just one-fifth the size, generates significantly less heat. Fewer tiles needed, lower temperatures, simpler thermal protection. It's like comparing a freight train trying to stop versus a sports car. Which one handles better? Here's where Zubrin's genius becomes terrifying for SpaceX. While Musk obsesses over 33 Raptor engines working perfectly together, Zubrin uses just two. Think about that. 33 potential failure points versus two. During Starship's recent Flight 7, multiple engine failures caused a catastrophic explosion. If that happened to Zubrin's system, two engines provide enough redundancy without the complexity nightmare. Sometimes simpler really is better, but there's something even more shocking about Zubrin's approach that SpaceX executives are desperately trying to counter. While SpaceX tests and explodes billion-dollar prototypes, Zubrin is building something that could launch tomorrow. His mini Starship fits on existing rockets. Falcon Heavy, New Glenn, even Europe's Ariane 6. No new launch infrastructure needed. The timeline comparison is brutal. SpaceX. 2029 earliest for crewed Mars landing Zubrin. Potentially 2027. That's a two-year head start in the most important race in human history. But here's the kicker. Zubrin's system could be manufactured by multiple companies simultaneously. While SpaceX controls every bolt and wire, creating bottlenecks, Zubrin's distributed approach means faster production and lower costs. Elon Musk built Starship on one critical assumption. Bigger is better. More payload, more capability, more impressive. But Mars doesn't care about impressive. Mars cares about what works. Here's the brutal truth. Starship's size is its weakness, not its strength. Every system becomes exponentially more complex. The fuel production facility on Mars needs to be massive. The landing zones need extensive preparation. The refueling operations in space are incredibly risky. Zubrin's mini Starship turns all these weaknesses into advantages. Need less fuel? Build smaller production facilities. Want safer landings? Lighter vehicles are more maneuverable. Worried about space refueling? Skip it entirely. Three weeks after Zubrin's presentation, something interesting happened at SpaceX. 
Internal documents leaked showing emergency meetings about alternative architectures. Suddenly, teams were pulled off other projects to study distributed mission profiles. Coincidence? Hardly. SpaceX engineers were quietly running the numbers on Zubrin's approach. The results? Some insiders say the analysis was devastating for Starship's business case. But Musk couldn't just abandon his $20 billion investment. Instead, SpaceX doubled down, pushing harder for Starship's success while secretly developing contingency plans. Here's what's really happening behind the scenes. While the world watches SpaceX's spectacular test flights, Zubrin is quietly building partnerships. Major aerospace contractors are interested. International space agencies are paying attention. Even some NASA officials are privately questioning the Starship-only approach. The clock is ticking for SpaceX. Every failed test flight, every delayed timeline, every exploded prototype gives Zubrin more credibility. And once someone else successfully demonstrates the mini Starship concept, SpaceX's advantage disappears overnight. But this isn't just about rockets. It's about control. SpaceX's model requires massive upfront investment and years of infrastructure development. Only the richest companies and nations can play. Zubrin's approach democratizes Mars exploration. Imagine instead of one company controlling Mars access, dozens of mini starships operated by different organizations, creating a competitive marketplace. Costs plummet, innovation accelerates, and Mars becomes accessible to smaller nations and private companies. SpaceX's monopolistic dream turns into a distributed space economy nightmare, for them at least. While SpaceX engineers focused on making bigger, more powerful engines, Subern identified the real problem, efficiency of operations, not just thrust. His mini Starship philosophy, don't build a bigger hammer when you need precision surgery. The breakthrough, multiple specialized vehicles instead of one do everything giant. Mini Starships for crew transport, cargo variants for supplies, specialized versions for surface operations. It's like having a fleet of targeted tools instead of one massive Swiss army knife. SpaceX finally realized this might work when their own internal studies showed Zubrin's approach could deliver the same payload capacity with 60% less infrastructure investment. If Zubrin succeeds, it doesn't just compete with SpaceX, it makes Starship obsolete before it even reaches Mars. The implications are staggering. Mars missions become routine instead of spectacle events. Multiple companies can afford Mars operations costs drop from billions to hundreds of millions. Mission flexibility increases dramatically. Risk decreases with smaller, simpler systems. But here's the most shocking part. Zubrin's approach could work for the entire solar system, not just Mars. Moon bases, asteroid mining, Jupiter's moons, all become economically viable with its distributed architecture. Right now, two visions of humanity's future are colliding. Musk's centralized empire where SpaceX controls access to Mars versus Zubrin's distributed network where multiple players compete and innovate. The winner won't just control Mars exploration. They'll shape how humanity expands across the solar system. Will we have one gatekeeper deciding who goes to space or an open marketplace where innovation thrives? The next 24 months will determine the answer. SpaceX needs Starship to work flawlessly soon or risk losing their first mover advantage forever. Zubrin needs just one successful demonstration to prove his concept and attract major backing. This isn't just about engineering anymore. It's about the future of human civilization. Will Mars be SpaceX's private colony or humanity's shared frontier? The answer depends on whether a brilliant scientist with a radical idea can outmaneuver the world's most famous entrepreneur. One thing is certain, the space race just got a lot more interesting, and SpaceX's engineers are working overtime, knowing that their $20 billion investment could become irrelevant if they don't move fast enough. The question isn't whether Zubrin's mini Starship could work. The question is whether SpaceX can prove Starship is worth the massive extra cost and complexity before it's too late. So here we are, watching the greatest engineering rivalry unfold in real time. Two brilliant minds, two completely different visions, and the future of human civilization hanging in the balance. Musk believes bigger is better, that massive rockets will carry us to the stars. Zubrin argues smarter beats bigger, that elegant simplicity will get us there faster and cheaper. Both could be right, both could be wrong. But here's what's really fascinating. 
This isn't just about Mars anymore. The winner of this battle will set the template for all future space exploration. Will we colonize the solar system with massive centralized missions or through distributed networks of smaller, agile spacecraft? The answer might surprise you, and it's happening right now in real time as both teams race toward the ultimate demonstration. What do you think? Are you Team Giant Starship or Team Mini Starship? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment and love seeing your perspectives on these game-changing developments. And if you're as fascinated by this space race as I am, you'll want to see what happens next. Because this story is just getting started. And the next chapter might completely flip everything we just discussed. Until then, keep looking up. The future is being written in the stars. SpaceX Dragon violently crashes into ocean while Dream Chaser lands like a feather at 1.5G, yet NASA rejected it for crew missions. Here's the plot twist. Dream Chaser secretly outperforms Dragon in every way. 15 reuses versus 5. Intact cargo returns. Global runway access. So why did NASA call it the loser, then quietly handed ISS contracts? The real reason will blow your mind. Let's dive right in. Picture this, August 2014, Boeing's Starliner parachute deployment test. One of three parachutes fails catastrophically. The capsule slams into New Mexico desert at nearly lethal force. NASA engineers watch in horror as their safest choice nearly kills its own test crew. Meanwhile, 2,000 miles away, Dream Chaser glides onto Edwards Air Force Base runway at a whisper soft 1.5G. No parachutes. No violence, no drama, just perfection. Yet NASA had just rejected Dream Chaser and handed Boeing a $4.2 billion contract. Why? The answer will shatter everything you think you know about NASA's decision-making. Here's the classified detail NASA buried in 847 pages of selection documents. Dream Chaser actually scored higher than Starliner in technical performance. But Boeing had something Sierra Space couldn't match. Senators in their pocket. Boeing employs 153,000 people across 37 states. That's 37 senators who need those jobs to stay put. Sierra Space? 4,000 employees in Colorado. Do the political math. Internal NASA emails leaked in 2019 reveal the smoking gun. Technical evaluators wrote, Dream Chaser demonstrates superior landing capability, reduced crew risk, and enhanced mission flexibility. But Administrator Charles Bolden overruled his own engineers, citing programmatic considerations, translation, politics trumped performance, and it nearly killed American spaceflight. But here's where the story gets insane. While Boeing burned through billions trying to make parachutes work, Sierra Space was perfecting something that made SpaceX's Dragon look primitive. Those 2,000 heat shield tiles aren't just pretty, they're revolutionary. Each tile is precision engineered to withstand 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt steel. But here's the kicker, they're reusable 15 times. Dragon's heat shield, single-use garbage that gets destroyed every mission. The numbers are devastating for SpaceX. Dream Chaser. 15 reuses per vehicle. Dragon, five maximum reuses. Dream Chaser, global runway access. Dragon, ocean recovery only. Dream Chaser, intact cargo return. Dragon, saltwater contamination. SpaceX engineers privately admitted Dream Chaser's landing system was annoyingly elegant. But the real shock came when Sierra Space revealed their production costs. Dream Chaser's total mission cost, $200 million. Dragon's equivalent mission? $320 million. That's 40% cheaper for superior performance. How is this possible? No ocean recovery fleet, no saltwater refurbishment, no parachute repacking. Dream Chaser lands, gets serviced like a 747, and flies again within weeks. But SpaceX had no choice. They were locked into ocean landings by NASA's safety requirements. Or were they? Here's what NASA doesn't want you to know. 
Every dragon splashdown destroys millions of dollars in space research. Those protein crystals that could cure cancer, obliterated by ocean impact, delicate manufacturing samples, ruined by saltwater contamination. Dr. Michael Roberts, ISS National Lab Director, went on record. We're losing breakthrough research every time Dragon hits the ocean. It's scientific vandalism. Dream Chaser solves this with surgical precision. Runway landing means samples reach labs within hours. Still fresh, still viable. We're talking about potential medical breakthroughs worth billions getting trashed because NASA chose politics over science. But the cover-up goes deeper than anyone imagined. December 2019, Starliner's first unmanned test flight, what NASA called a partial success, was actually a near catastrophe that came within minutes of killing the entire crew program. Classified mission reports reveal Starliner's computer system failed so badly, it nearly crashed into the ISS. Boeing software calculated the wrong orbit, burned through fuel reserves, and left the capsule tumbling out of control. The parachute system that failed in 2019, it failed again in 2022. Same design, same fatal flaw. NASA kept writing checks while astronauts' lives hung in the balance. Meanwhile, Dream Chaser completed every test flawlessly. Zero failures, zero delays, zero drama. So why did NASA keep betting on Boeing? We cannot afford to have Boeing fail. The political ramifications would destroy the entire commercial crew program. Internal NASA Memo, March 2020. NASA was trapped. They'd invested so much credibility in Boeing that admitting the mistake would trigger congressional investigations, budget cuts, and career-ending scandals. So they doubled down. More money for Boeing. More delays. More excuses. All while Dream Chaser sat ready to save American spaceflight. But Sierra Space had a secret plan. While NASA played politics, Sierra Space quietly revolutionized spaceflight. That $2.9 billion cargo contract wasn't consolation prize. It was strategic positioning. Dream Chaser's cargo version shares 85% of 